How do you make a profit? You buy low and you sell high, right? An investor is never supposed to pay more for an asset than what it's really worth. So then the question really becomes, how do you know how much an asset is supposed to be worth and how do you value it? Well, when valuing financial assets, there are many factors to consider. Things like net profit is an obvious one, but then there's things like company likability. How much do people love this company? How dedicated are they to this company like Apple fans and Tesla fans? The easiest place to start is by using measurable factors. So let's start there. In this video, I want to introduce you to the ever so popular discounted cash flow valuation model. So let's take a deep dive into intrinsic valuation. In the DCF valuation model, we determine how much a financial asset like a stock or a rental property is worth based on the cash flow that we expect the asset to produce over its lifetime and all the uncertainties involved. If you think about a rental property and forget about market appreciation for a moment, a landlord is dependent on that rental income that the property produces to make a profit. Now, if the property does not produce a cash flow, then you can say some value has been lost for the landlord. Now, all in all, a successful business is one that produces cash flow and makes a profit. This is what gives value to an asset. Now that we've covered what gives an asset its value, let's break down the discounted cash flow valuation model. So I did mention that the model is dependent on cash flow, but the model is also dependent on those uncertainties of the cash flows themselves. So what are these uncertainties? Well, these uncertainties can be equated to risks to the cash flow themselves. There are a number of different things that can contribute to these uncertainties. Things like the overall economic situation, interest rates, uh, rate of returns, cost of debt, and other risks. Now, this is where discounting the cash flows come into play. The goal of the DCF model is to calculate how much the asset is worth today based on the expected cash flows the asset is going to produce in the future. So then we have to have some kind of way to estimate how much the asset is going to produce in the future and then discount those cash flows back to the present using a discount rate. Now, a discount rate is simply just an interest rate used to discount the uncertainties that we talked about previously, the risk back to the present value. So let's go through an example. Let's say a savings account offers 10% interest rate. If you deposit $100 today, in one year, you will grow those $100 into $110. So that's really the $100 plus the 10% that you will make, which is $10, and that will equal the $110. So if we kind of think of this in reverse and we rephrase it, you can say that $110 of future value discounted by 10% is worth $100 today. That's why people always say that your money is worth more today than it is in the future. In this example, $100 of today's money is worth $110 in the future. Let that sink in a bit and just think about what this means. The discount rate is a way to discount those uncertainties or the risks of the cash flows. And there are plenty of intricate ways to calculate this discount rate, uh, which we'll cover in the next video, so stick around. But for the purposes of this video and just to demonstrate the basic idea, we're going to stick to a simple percentage. So with that being said, let me introduce you to the actual DCF formula. So at first, the formula seems kind of intimidating, but I promise it's really straightforward. All that this says is that we have to grab all the future cash flows and then divide it by one plus the discount rate, what we're discounting those cash flows by. And then you raise it by the period. So if it's uh, from the first cash flow, the second cash flow, the third cash flow, you'll raise it by that number. So here we assume that there are 10 cash flow periods in the future. Now all you do is you take the cash flow, you divide it by one plus the discount rate, and then you raise it by that period. So for the first period, you're gonna raise it by one, the second period by two, third period by three, so on and so forth until you get to the 10th period and you add them all together and then you get the present value. Let's go back to that savings account example and then let's just go through it. Here's the formula again. So first we'll take all our cash flow periods. In this case, we only have one cash flow year. So we'll do that. We'll take that cash flow year. We'll divide it one plus the discount rate 
And again, the discount rate in this example is 10%, so we'll convert into decimal form. So 0 0.10. Next, what we do is we're gonna take that denominator, the bottom number, and we're gonna raise it by the cash flow period. In this case, again, we only have one cash flow year, so we're just gonna raise it by one, which is the same exact denominator that we had in the first place. Next, what we're gonna do is add the one plus the discount rate, so the bottom number. Once you do that, you go ahead and do the whole division, and then you get back the discounted cash flow of $100. So again, what this means is that $110 in the future is worth $100 today. You may be asking yourself, how can DCF help me determine whether an investment is a good one or not? Well, this is where due diligence comes into play and you have to make your research and determine what companies have the market valued lower than what it's actually worth. And then you buy the company at a discount. Now let's take a look at a tool that we have been working on to demonstrate the idea of the discounted cash flow evaluation model. All right, so here is the uh, DCF tool that we developed so that we can better demonstrate what DCF really is. So what this does is it looks at a particular company, in this case, it's Apple, and it calculates automatically in the background the DCF to come up with the intrinsic value. So what you see here is sort of a dashboard that describes all the calculations and the different details that you come up with when you calculate the DCF. Here in this first block, you see the market price. Right now, the market is pricing Apple at $145.64. In the middle is the actual result that you get from calculating the DCF, which is the intrinsic value. So right now, the DCF model says that Apple should actually be worth $73.32 at its intrinsic value based on cash flows. But really, the market is pricing at $145. So what does this mean? Well, if we look at what is called the margin of safety, that means that if we buy Apple at this price, we have a potential downside of 49.66%. The thing with DCF is that it's built on so much assumptions that you have to be very careful of what this means. Here we have a nice bar chart showing you the differences between the market price and what the DCF actually calculated. So here you see the big difference. Uh, you know, there's a obvious 50% or so of a difference there between market price and fair value. So that's a nice visual that you get here. And on this side, you can actually see the charts of all the free cash flows for Apple. So here we start from 2001 and we come up here and we can see sort of the forecasted free cash flows that we're predicting. And of course, the actual free cash flows in the future is a big, huge assumption that we make when we calculate the DCF. So these are some of the numbers that we have to tweak. And of course, you have the option to do so, and I'll show you in a bit. Here we have the, the tweaking values that you can use in your DCF, which are the DCF assumptions. And I'll talk about them a little later. And uh, sort of just a table of the actual projected free cash flows. And we have a nice little section that shows you how to calculate um, what this uh, tool is doing in the background manually uh, and showing you what the, basically what every step means and so on and so forth. We have different panels and you can explore but I won't get too much into it in this video since we're just covering the simple the simplicity and the fundamental of what DCF is but you can go ahead and explore yourself if we open this up we can see that there's a discount rate percentage right here now this DCF model put Apple at an 11.21 uh, discount rate so what does that mean it's again the interest rate or sort of the risks uh, or uncertainties factored into these cash flows that we're discounting them by. So you can actually, uh, you know, enter your own manual discount rate and sort of see how this affects the fair value or the intrinsic value that is calculated from, you know, doing the DCF. So if we do something like 8%, you can see there's a big drastic change, right? So now there's an actual upside of 3.37% and it's valuating uh, um, Apple at $150.55. So you can see that these assumptions, these values, these what we call parameters uh, make a huge difference. So there's some other numbers that we can play around with, but we'll cover it in the next videos.
and that's it for this one thank you guys so much for watching again i wanted to keep this video very simple very basic so that you can get a better understanding or a good grasp of the fundamental idea of what dcf is in the next video uh, we'll be covering how to actually come up with that discount rate using weighted average cost of capital we'll get a little technical uh, but we'll also be covering the idea of a termination value which did we didn't cover in this video um, but so make sure to stick around and uh, we'll see you on the next one.